Okay guys, um, so I recently posted a video asking you for opinions on what I should be posting to try to make this more of a consistent channel. I'm trying to push for that. Uh, I had one person in particular, I don't remember your name, I'm so sorry, but on my video asking for everyone's opinion, he mentioned that I should do a pre or post video on my photo shoots of whatever I'm assigned to go cover. And I thought that was a brilliant, but a simple yet brilliant idea. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna go, go through with it and I'm gonna try to push to make this as consistent as I can, um, regardless of how busy I may be or sidetracked I may get, I'm gonna try to do this as much as I can. So we're gonna go over some of the shots that, or not some, all the shots that I took at uh, Lake Elsinore Storm Baseball. Uh, this was take these were all taken yesterday. I'm the team photographer over there and I cover their games uh, over the weekend. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, if they're home, I'm covering those games. Um, you're gonna see a lot of variety in this. Uh, you're gonna go from super zoomed in shots like the one you see right here, uh, all the way to super wide angle shots. And I'm gonna be talking about uh, how I got certain shots, why I took it, what it's useful for, um, what else? Uh, and just basically where I was positioned at and how you can create galleries that look similar to this one. And I'm going to try to make this a continuous series where I just go over images that I've taken at an event. Uh, so post and yeah, let's just jump right into it. So first of all, we have this shot here. We got a nice headshot of this guy. Um, I would if I was to change something with this photo, I don't like the background that I picked. Um, I was squatting down a little bit. No, I, I, I don't remember this. I think, let me look through these, I'm sorry. No, I was standing up a little bit. I think there really wasn't a way to work around it, to be honest. If anything, I would have to go out on the field and get him. But during the time of this shot, the game was going on. So I was already kind of leaning a little bit out of the media area as it was. Um, I mean, regardless, it's a nice photo that Storm is obviously very happy to use. And the other key thing is don't take everything that I say literal because it really depends on who you're shooting for and what your client wants. Because a lot of the shots in this gallery, I'm personally not happy with. I personally don't like, but you have to understand that my client or whoever your client is may love these shots or may ask you for these photos. So it really depends what your client wants. Like at the end of the day, what's paying the bills? It's what you're producing for your client and what your client wants. And that's just your bread and butter. And you have to get those shots, whether it's a nice stock photo or just action shots and the shots that you can get every day, you're going to see a lot of that in here. It may seem plain and boring to some of you, but this is your bread and butter. You need to get these shots consistently and then some on top of that. And we'll go over what the then some shots are. Uh, a lot of it is going to be more unique slash different type of images, not your typical action shots or stock photos. So as I was saying about this set here, just the background isn't the greatest. Uh, it's a little blown out over here. So I would, if I could, reposition myself some other way, maybe in between the inning, maybe move out a little and try to get him when he's peeking over at the edge of the dugout. But again, like the Storm's more than happy to use this. And the other thing with this is uh, these images, were, these were all shot in JPEG. I normally shoot raw for my events, but for Storm in particular, uh, they ask me all the time to shoot JPEG only and that's just how they want it. I shoot the images, I dump the images on their computer and I go home. So these are not edited at all. These are straight out of the camera. Um, I'm not gonna really go in, I'm not gonna go over editing so much because I don't have to edit these and I'm not gonna waste my time on it. I'm already, I'm getting paid to go out there and cover the game, shoot it in JPEG and go home. Um, I mean, if anything, I might briefly go over something like this, maybe like cropping this type of shot. I would probably do something like this and maybe going a little bit tighter from up here, you wanna avoid this space up here, but I'm not, again, I'm not gonna waste my time on this at all. Or you can do something like this. It just depends, it all depends. But I'm just gonna go over the shots in general and explain like why I took them, what they're used for, and why you should be taking these kind of shots too. I'm gonna scan through some of these. I Bear with me, there might be some times where I'm pausing. Uh, it's because I have over 2,000 shots from this game. Um, 
let's see, just standard stuff here, just standard shot of a pitcher. Um, one thing you can do with this is instead of full body, if you want, depending on the body you have or in the lens that you're using, you can pull this off. Do something like this, just get a nice upper half clean shot of him. Uh, the background's not the greatest, but hey, I mean, it is what it is. You're limited on where you can move at these kind of events. You just have to work with that. But this is another cool one. You can do something like that or just keep it as full body. Uh, some people might even do something like this. You can go in a little bit like that right there. So yeah, and something like that. Like you, there's a lot of types of shots that you can work around with with like anytime you're able to fill the frame, which is what you always want to try and do, you have a lot of room to work with in terms of cropping, which is always nice. Let's go through some of these. There's the shout out. Thank you, umpire. Shout out to all the umpires that ruin our shots. <clears throat> Here we go. He's got a tag out at second. Nothing too spectacular. Not Not a great action moment, really. Just catches it. No... Jumping, nothing, just tag done. But again, they love that stuff. They're happy with that kind of with a shot like that. And I mean, it is what it is. Um, let's see here. What can we do with this one? Something like this. I mean, the other reason they don't want me to edit it is because they want to have all this room right here. They want to work with the image. They, in fact, ask me to shoot looser than I normally do. I have the mindset of shooting extremely tight for like max preps and just in general, like sports photographers and veterans will always teach you online, <clears throat> including myself, to shoot tight, always shoot tight. It's not necessarily true that it needs to be constant because again, it depends on what your client wants. I've had Storm confront me and talk to me about this issue before and said, hey, uh, your shots are a little too tight. Can you give us a little bit more space to work with since we're the ones editing the photos and using this on, on our pam pamphlets uh, for just, we're advertising, we wanna have some space to put some text in the image. And that's mainly the reason why they want me to just leave the images be. But for you, if you're not doing this type of work for that kind of client, you can always bring it in. You know, in this kind of shot, I just probably leave it like do something like this, leave some space right here, or if you don't like that, you think it's too much dead space, which in my opinion it is, you can do something like this. And if you, if people will argue like, well, you don't want to cut off the bat and stuff like that, but there are times where it's okay. You know this is baseball when you look at it, even if the, the bat's not there, it's not the end of the world if you do that. The whole point is to get your attention on his face. It's a nice stock photo of him looking up. You can see his face, you can see his eye, you can see his reaction on his face. That's what you want. I'm gonna go scan through these a lot faster. Again, it takes forever to load, I'm sorry. Let's go through some of these. Okay, also vertical shots. Mixing it in, don't just do nothing but horizontal. This is a nice shot that could be used on a baseball card. I left a little bit of space above and a little bit of space below just for them to work with it a little bit. <clears throat> Background's fine. I mean, this is a standard shot, like I said. Again, it, they probably use this kind of shot for baseball when you're, baseball cards, when you're able to see their face and it's just nice and clean. I'm gonna, instead of doing this, I'm gonna look at the thumbnail and click on shots I see because this will take way too long otherwise. Like I said, most of these are just really clean. Really, really clean, standard shots. This is when the sun was setting more and more and I wanted to play with the lighting a little bit, so I did so. Here, this is, the, this is a pain in the ass over at Storm is that they don't get a lot of fans consistently, so the background always has empty seats and nobody likes that. That's obviously something you wanna avoid, but again, like, there are certain things that you as a photographer can't control and as much as I would love to move somewhere else where this isn't an issue, I really can't. The only other way is to go overhead up on the top floor and aim down, um, but I prefer to have a blurrier background, a nice clean background, but that's just my opinion. But at the same time, I mix it up. I like to do both. Sometimes I'll, I'll get both kind of shots at events. As far as cropping, like something like this, just standard. I would definitely, if, it, if your exposure is like this, I'd bring it down a little because you want to be able to see some of the detail in the, in the highlights here. If they're wearing white clothes, you want to see the detail in that. If they have any black on, 
I'm gonna bring up a little bit of the shadows right here so you can see some more detail and just kind of even it out. Um, that's what I would do with that kind of shot. And you know, sometimes we like to leave a little bit of space in front of them. Again, like I'm assuming the guys over at Storm are doing something like this. They're gonna brighten this up a little bit, a little too dark, probably right here. And they leave this space right here open so that they can put text for like, oh, season starts this date when they're off season and they're trying to advertise it or whatever it may be. Or hell, they might even just take it and just go vertical and just shoot like that. So again, whatever the client wants. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I can talk about as I'm going through these so I don't bore the hell out of you guys. And I wanna make this as quickly as I can. Uh, so apologies if this is boring at first, guys. Uh, this is my first time doing a vlog and I'm trying to make this more consistent. Um, again, just stock, stock stuff. The background is a little bit nicer over here. I wish that this was across all of it because all the silver little circles are just empty seats. But again, just customer service. They love to see it. They love to see smiles. And I just realized <laughs> this lady's face right here is ridiculous. Oh my God. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. What do we got here? What do we got here? Just, again, they'll probably take this. And I mean, if you were the photographer, something like this, just a Titan upper half profile shot of somebody. This is all, it's very simple. Bring down a little bit of the highlights there. I mean, this again, these are JPEGs, so I can't really work with the files. Um, it's really annoying. I hate it. But basically, if there's too much of, if there's too many shadows somewhere, like say on his face right here, it's too shadowy, bring up the shadows. If this, if the white is too white and you can't see details in it, bring your whites down. Um, I highly recommend that you shoot raw at events. Um, yeah, it is uh, partly like, it's true that if you're shooting JPEG, you should be able to get the exposure right. And I honestly can admit that I definitely need to work on that. A lot of the time I do a little bit too bright. Um, that's just something that just takes a lot of practice. Uh, again, here's a good little example of creative. It's nothing super creative. It's nothing fantastic or portfolio worthy at all, but it's, it's just something different. You can have the third base coach right here looking down at the home and got the batter right over here, blurred out. And there's space here for them to work with if they want to put text or something. Um, even if you're not doing this for a client who wants to have dead space for text, it's still just something a little more interesting. It's not the usual. It's not the norm. And it, while it may be like, the, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, while it might not be like something super, super unique, like I said, or portfolio worthy, it's still something pretty cool. Um, batting shots are kind of tricky, like in terms of like creativeness, there's only so much you can do. Um, I mix it up though. I like to, I want to give all different, uh, types of framing for my client. I want to do some shots where they're in the right dead center, right in the middle. Um, I like to sometimes put them on the right side of the frame or the left side, depending on which way I'm facing, whether, whether the batter's a lefty or righty and which side I'm on, whether I'm on home or away dugout. I like to do super tight shots like this one where it's barely got any room above or below him. I like to do a little bit wider, so I give my client more space to work with as well. So I'll use my 400. Uh, you can use your 300 if you have one, or 400, doesn't matter. Then you can move uh, to a 70 to 200. Uh, and sometimes you can even do like a 2470 and get like a nice shot of having the batter in the picture on the base of your frame at the very bottom and having some open sky with a stadium all around up top of the frame. Um, just having variety in your galleries is really key. You don't want to have one look in your gallery. You want to mix it up. I always tr tell myself when I cover a game, I want to give my client nothing but super zoom in and uh, mid zoom and wide. Nothing but those. Just give them three types of variety. Um, and with those three varieties, I want to get them a creative shot for each one. And sometimes I can't do that all the time. Sometimes I just, I, I, you know, I'm not always perfect. No one's going to, you know, judge me for that. It's just, it's just the way it is. You can't be perfect all the time, you know? Let's see here. The lighting was funky right there. Mascot just jumping around on the home dugout, trying to hype up the crowd, high-fiving fans. 
again, stuff like this, they it makes them really happy. I think this is with my 400. Yeah, it was. Um, something like this, just crop those ladies out right there. Kind of bring it in closer here. A little bit brighter, a little bit more contrast. You know, something like this, this is not how I fully edit it. I add a little bit more to it, but again, these are JPEGs, so I don't really have much room to work with these files. I'm just strictly trying to display these for you guys so you can see what kind of galleries I'm getting. Is this 400 still? Yeah, it's a little bit looser. We have a little bit more space over here. Um, just so that my client can work with these again. I know I'm, I'm constantly repeating myself, I'm, I apologize. But just, just trying to give you guys an idea. Let's move on here. Oh yeah, this is a good topic. Okay, so, okay. So this batter, hold on, give me a second. This batter, Blanco. He is facing away from me. Uh, this is only for baseball in particular and softball. So when the batter is facing away, try to avoid shooting their back. You wanna hit them the moment when they hit the ball and then keep shooting until you get that. And unfortunately the third base coach was blocking right here, but that's okay. You want this. This is the kind of shot you wanna work with here, okay? Um, whether it's an upper half shot of him doing that or just moving it over right here, getting a shot like that, okay? So while that may be pretty basic for more advanced shooters, they already know this kind of thing. For those of you who are beginners or mom and dads on sidelines or at a baseball game with your kids there and you wanna get clean photographs like that, this is one good example. Wait until they turn and face you. Sometimes though, you can get shots of their back and be a little more creative. And I'll, if I have any in this gallery, I'll show you. If otherwise, you'll see it in future videos here. Okay, moving on, moving on, what do we got? Background's a little blown out here. Just a pinch, it's not terrible. Oh, there's a, I remember that a little bird on the field. Again, vertical shots here. I was pissed that I couldn't get this guy's face because his helmet was blocking him until that part right there. But right there, you can barely see his eyes. Okay, going through, going through. I don't wanna make this video too long. Like I got blocked, yeah, I got blocked here. Cool slide, but umpire, ugh, it sucked. Okay. Ball boy, just high-fiving a guy after he hit a home run. Something like this, just upper half. It's nothing spectacular, again, but I'm just giving you guys a little bit of an idea of like how to properly crop your photos or just giving you ideas on cropping. Okay, again, after swing. Sometimes they'll do this. They're gonna give you a derpy face and you won't be able to get a nice shot of them with their eyes open. Not until at least that. And at this point, you can leave it full body or if you have a nice enough camera or you're close enough with the zoom, you can do something like that. Again, it just depends. It depends on what kind of shot you're looking to get or what your client wants. If a client says, I wanna get a nice, clean, like a profile shot of my son or daughter or wh whoever, then give them that upper half shot. Or if they say, you know, I just want a full body shot, then go with a full body shot. It all depends. Or if you just wanna mix it up just in general. You can do both. It's really not that hard. Again, like a little bit something different, nothing crazy. Um, I'd say bring it up to the dirt at least. Leave it like that. Again, a little bit of space here for them to work with. They love these kind of shots. And here's another one. I wish that the crowd was more full. It's very annoying that they're not, um, but I would just leave that as is, it's fine. Moving on, let's go through these. I think next time, um, for going through the photos, I think what I'm gonna do is just delete a lot of these and keep highlights just so that the videos are not as long. So again, I apologize for this being a long video and having moments where I'm freezing or just repeating myself, but I think that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of these, for the whole rest of the series of these vlogs. Um, because we're just seeing a lot of just standard stuff. And I mean, this is a good, way though for me to see um, my galleries because honestly 
when I'm shooting for these guys, I give them the images and then I just come home and I don't even check these things. And it's really good for me to see these in person and see what I've been shooting because the first thing that I'm noticing that a problem I'm having is I'm shooting a lot of duplicates. And I mean, it's kind of hard to work around that with baseball and softball because it's nine innings. It's a really long game. It's dragged out and you're always going to see batters batting. You're always going to get those kind of shots. And yeah, it's kind of redundant and just annoying and repetitive. And, but you know, I want to try to avoid that and I want to have my galleries give a little bit more variety than this. It's a little inconsistent or it's a little too consistent of the same type of shot. Um, I know here I was trying to get a kid, the storm baseball I had on smiling. I think he got, <laughs> he got, <laughs> wow. Hold on. Let me find the one that's in focus. There we go. Hold on. This is crazy. So you can see the peanut right in his mouth. Wow. Again, Storm, they go nuts over those things. They love it. Um, right here, another good one that they like to have. He's at the peak of his run. He's not in like that awkward stance where it's like kind of like that. He just looks a little more awkward or like this one. That one's good. And then like this one right here. Like that's the, that's the stance you want. It's a nice looking stance. Uh, moving on, facing the other way now with the batters. Running shots of them after they hit hit a ball. Just a series of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely, definitely go through these beforehand and delete any that are just repetitive. Like Because these are all like obviously frame by frame by frame. Storm fan sharing. Pay attention to all the fans. Pay attention to stuff outside of the game, you know. But at the same time, don't get too distracted to where you're not focusing on the game and then you miss a really big play. I've done that plenty of times. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> so try to pay attention. But at the same time, look around. See if you see anything interesting in the in the crowd of all the fans or if you're able to get close to the dugout or if you're on the sidelines for a football game. Just keep an eye on that kind of stuff, you know. Okay, I'm going to skip through some of these because... The video is already too too long. Okay, so I got pictures of uh, Thunder earlier with the 400 millimeter. These are all with uh, 70 to 200, so it's a little bit wider, and this gets you way more of a feel of the the support of the crowd here with him. He's hyping up the crowd, yada yada stuff that all of Storm really really likes. They love this stuff. Tossing out free T-shirts, I think it is. I went a little bit wider here. As he was running down on the top of the dugout for home, fans throwing their arms up, cheering. Um, it is a little bit too bright, just a little bit, something like that. Yeah, it's half a stop too bright. Moving on, moving on. What do we got? What do we got? This is where I went with my 70 to 200. I went much wider here. You can see a lot more space. But so let's go. Let's let's fix this one here. So first off, the horizon. Of this is a little bit tilted so I want to keep that nice and clean just a little bit there we go that's better we bring up our exposure just a little bit add some contrast to there make the colors pop I think if I was to crop this I'd bring it down a little bit maybe right here bring them over a little bit Something like this again, like it just sucks that the crowd isn't as full. Uh, if it was, if you're at a pro game or a college game, it's most likely going to be full and look a lot cleaner. But again, that's not in my control. The only thing I could do is just go over in the very back up here and get an overhead shot. Um, but I like to have a low to the ground look. That's all. That's a shot we all want to achieve. I'm gonna skip through these. The video's getting too long here. I think again. Uh, 7200. This is other kid. He's throwing peanuts at the fans. Tossing it. Okay. Behind the, uh, not dugout, behind uh, the catcher and the umpire shot. This is with the 7200. Uh, you can do this with the 400 as well. And in the future videos, you'll see the kind of shot I'm talking about. But like right there, this is a really cool, unique kind of angle. Um, I know that this is standard in a lot of people's galleries. It's nothing spectacular again, but these are the kind of shots where you 
you want to get these kind of shots and try to make this standard. You want to try to make this the norm in your gallery so that as basic as it may be, you're taking the effort of moving around. And that's another thing. You want to move around in... Uh, anytime you're covering a game, you want to try to move around as much as you can. If you have the access and the ability to move around and you're not as restricted, um, just like pro and college games, they're very restricted on where you can go. They usually just have you sit in one spot, which really sucks. Um, that's why I always try to take advantage at Storm. They have a lot more flexibility. I can move around wherever I want, and that helps me get shots that make my gallery a lot more uh, full of variety. Uh, let's move on. We're in the dugout now. Uh, again, just a little more creative, a little more detail kind of shots. Um, that's the other thing is you want to have detail in your gallery. Super close up of just little things here and there. Uh, background always matters. Obviously, I squ squatted down for this. If I was standing up and aiming down, it would just be his crotch in the background completely. But getting lower like this... His hand is blocking his crotch right here, so it's not like the main focus. And then we have the Storm logo on his chest, on his jersey, as the background. Um, so whether you have to stand up or squat down or lay on your stomach, as long as you're not disturbing the game or you're not causing an issue at all and you're safe, do what you got to do to get the right angle for a shot. Like, again, but just be careful. Don't do anything stupid where you're going to you know, walk on the field or something like that and cause a problem and then you end up getting kicked out just be aware of your surroundings um but just at the same time be creative these are getting a little too dark here that's on my end something that i need to work on again is my consistency is my i'm a little bit inconsistent with my exposures um i need to practice that more and more and try to make it more consistent but again another shot just detail of the storm logo on his jersey right here nothing crazy but just a little bit different I always try to make it, uh, I always try to force myself to just go in the dugout and get some shots of them laughing, smiling, having a good time. Some candid stuff. Again, a little bit of an edit, just brought the white balance down a little to balance it out so they aren't so Simpson-y looking. Uh, brought my exposure up a little bit. It seems like I'm always off by half a stop. I really, it's, it's so annoying that I'm doing that. Okay, so this shot here, I was trying to get his uh, Bible verse uh, brand right here on his wrist. Um, I failed pretty bad at that because I didn't get all of it right here. So this shot, if I was to make it a little bit different, I would have gone in front of him and got the full text on this right here if I could. Uh, I didn't do that, but there's something that you guys can learn from. Like, check for these details. I mean, the whole point of the image was to get the text on his uh, wrist, but I took the shot and I forget why I stopped. I think I just moved on to other things going on. Yeah, like, here we go. The manager just chatting with another guy here. Just, again, clean shots. The, these are way underexposed, unfortunately. I think I, did I lighten these up? I did later. And then the, the rookie sat down next to the manager, was watching the game, and then he started talking to him later. Uh, let's see moving on moving on I would fix the horizon on this it's a little too tilted I think I did it intentionally but after looking at it on the computer I really don't like the way it looks personally I think I was trying to just get the storm eyes in the back here um, I mean it's subjective at that point but personally I after looking at this on the computer I'm just like eh, it's not that great uh, again, white balance is like impossible. Oh my god, it's this is also why I hate not editing the shots at Storm. It's ugh. Let's see here. I'm not gonna work on these too much. I'm just gonna brighten it up a little bit. But again, uh, manager is stepping on the pitcher's mound and talking to the team uh, while the third base coach is talking to this guy here, having this in the background. Just so you know what's going on. It gets you a feel of what's going on. Um, nothing too special again. Just a little bit different. Instead of getting like a super close-up shot of just the two. Again, guys running down on the... And they do this a lot. Man, this is all throughout the game. Oh, make that go away. Hyping the crowd up. That's Storm's really good at that, honestly. They always hype up the crowd. 
gonna scan through these. Oh, yeah, that's why it's doing it. So it's doing it by the lens, not by the time taken. I'm gonna skip through some of these a lot faster, but these are just wide angle shots. Getting really close to this chick with the Baskin Robbins ice cream on her head. <laughs> Hold on, this one right here. Nice. Zoom in on that. Boom. Nice. Um, I think with this, I should have gone to the right side over here and taken it from like this side so I can get his jersey on him and his face a little bit better. Uh, it's kind of awkwardly framed. Uh, there's not, it's kind of like, it's just kind of awkward. It's just bleh. Like it's not framed all that great. I should have done better with this in my opinion. Um, this is fine. Kid, maybe if anything, just move over a little bit more to the side. I think I was like being blocked. Yeah, I was blocked by some fans right here. I was trying to run over here before he walked away. Um, but if anything, move over a little bit more, maybe so I can see his face a little bit better. You can still see a smile and stuff, and that's fine. Like right here, this is fine right here. This is good. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. It'd be so funny if like at that precise moment, Thunder just like moves his hand away and just walks away. This is fine right here though. This is good. This is some good marketing type of shot that they could use for putting a little bit of text right here or something and just, or just posting this on their Instagram. Uh, it's just, this is what Storm really wants to see. They want to see fans involved. They want to see fans smiling, being happy. It has Baskin Robbins right here. Um, while, yes, you can't really make out that it's Baskin Robbins, um, Storm knows that it's Baskin Robbins and they can work with this for like, hey, come get Baskin Robbins today, buy one, get one free, whatever, they're promoting something like that. Uh, mini game in between an inning. Nothing special, nothing special. Dugout, wide angle. Again, like we want to cover all the, all the spectrum. We want to cover... Uh, telephoto, mid-range, and wide. So again, I'm going to, yeah, I definitely need to go through these next time and get rid of any of the ones that are just duplicates of stuff. This one was pretty cool. Let me find the one that's more balanced. Hold on. Hold on a second. Yeah, this one was kind of playing with like the different perspective. I was playing like dead on at, at him at, at eye level, and then I went down. This one's kind of awkward. Don't really like this one. I liked it at eye level better. I was using live view, and then I think they started making fun of him for uh, being like a, a model or something like that <laughs> because I started taking a bunch of pictures of him. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. So like right here, brighten this up a little bit, a little bit of contrast. If anything, if anything, just a little bit more up like that and maybe a little bit tighter, just a little bit. Just something like this. I like this. You got all this text here. Basically, when you're cropping your image, you need to ask yourself, is this part of the frame contributing to the photo. Uh, for this example, it was all this, and this really isn't, this is just dead space. All of this here is dead space, so let's just bring it in a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, and it brings the attention more to him, if that gives you guys the idea of what I'm talking about. Going over these some more. We're at the end here, finally. Sorry, guys, I know that was really dragged out. I'm going to make these definitely much, much shorter for future. Uh, he was just warming up, just getting shots of him with a wide angle, just messing around with it. Um, I want to try to work on getting better types of angles with the wide angle. The wide angles are always really hard to work with, honestly, because there's so much more in the frame. Unlike 400 millimeters, it's just the complete opposite. But I, I want to get some more practice in on wide angles. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this video, guys. That sums up 
I think I've covered everything I wanted to. Uh, again, I apologize for it being super long, and I apologize for it being kind of dragged out and having moments where uh, I'm just not talking at all or just repeating myself. Definitely going to make future videos a lot more shorter. I'm going to cut out all the crap and all the duplicates that I've taken because that was 2,000 shots, and a lot of them are just duplicates frame by frame of like the same thing happening, especially with batters and stuff like that. So I'm going to cut them down and just go over the highlights of the games after post-shoot. Um, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next one.